In the world of football, it's a rare occurrence to witness the emergence of a player destined for greatness. Yankuba Minta, the electrifying talent from Newcastle United, currently on loan at Feyenoord, is that exceptional player who has captivated audiences with his meteoric rise. With his blistering speed, impeccable skill, and a knack for finding the back of the net, Minte has become the talk of the town, captivating the hearts of fans and scouts alike. Hailing from the Gambia, a nation not traditionally known for its footballing exports, especially in comparison to its football powerhouse neighbor, Senegal, Minte has defied the odds and proven that talent knows no boundaries. Overcoming the challenges of adapting to a new country and navigating disciplinary issues, Minte's unwavering dedication and relentless work ethic have become the fuel propelling him towards stardom. With every stride he takes on the pitch, Minte showcases a rare blend of determination and flair that sets him apart from the crowd. As he continues to blaze his trail, it's becoming increasingly evident that Yankuba Minte is destined to leave an indelible mark on the beautiful game. Yankuba Minte, known as the Gambian Messi, was born on July 22, 2004. He grew up in Bakote, a suburb of Serekunda, the largest city in the Gambia, which is located near the mouth of the river. Minte was the second youngest of seven children, and his father, a former midfielder and avid Bayern Munich fan, had a strong passion for football. Yankuba Minte developed a deep passion for football at a very tender age. His mother, in recounting his story, shared that he would often skip school lessons to pursue his love for the game. She became aware of this when a woman informed her that instead of going to school, Yankuba would go to the football field. Concerned about his education, his mother decided to go find him and discipline him for neglecting his studies. Despite her efforts to discourage him from focusing solely on football, Yankuba's mother began to suspect that her son had the potential to become a professional player. She recalled that during that time, Yankuba was able to name all the players in the 22-man squad of the Gambia Under-17 team whenever the famous twin brothers and former Gambia Under-17 stars, Sidney and Sana, came to the field. It was during this period that a man told her that her son Yankuba would one day become a professional player. As Yankuba grew older, he faced challenges balancing his education and his passion for football. His mother narrated an incident when he was just 10 years old and football teams would unofficially sign him for a fee of 10 or $20. However, Yankuba, being a responsible young man, would divide the money and give his mother half of it so that she would not beat him for going to play football. When Yankuba reached the end of his basic school education, he made a decision that would change his path. He skipped school for four days, resulting in him missing his exams. His schoolmates went to his mother to report the matter, and upon hearing the information, she was eager to find Yankuba. Little did she know that Yankuba was playing football at the Serekunda West Park, fully aware that his mother would be angry with him. In order to appease his mother, he gave her $100 out of the $120 he was paid for representing one of the teams at the Serekunda West Park. Despite his mother's warnings not to quit his high school education, Yankuba made up his mind and told his mother not to waste money on his school fees because he would no longer continue going to school. This decision saddened his mother, but Yankuba was determined to pursue his dreams in football. Yankuba Minte's journey in football started when he began his professional career at Steve Biko FC. Before joining Danish club Obi Odens, Minte had an intriguing journey. Initially, Obi Odens wasn't completely convinced of his potential, and it took a second occasion to win them over. Minte was first brought to the club at the age of 16 by his agent Bakari Bojang. Bojang, a former Gambian player, had settled in Odens, the fourth largest city in Denmark, after retiring from professional football. He reached out to the academy boss, Tony Hermansen, with two player recommendations, one of whom was Minte. Hermansen recalled watching videos of the players and initially being more impressed by someone other than Minte. However, when Minte returned for a second training session just over a year later, he had transformed into a completely different player and caught the attention of the club's staff. Minte's first trial at OB Odense marked his introduction to professional football. Prior to that, he had been playing for Steve Biko FC in the Gambia, a team named after the South African civil rights activist who was tragically murdered. His performances for Steve Biko FC earned him recognition from national age group teams and subsequently caught the attention of his agent, who was based in Denmark. In order to advance in his football career, Yankuba Minte realized that he needed to leave his home country. Through the connections of his agent, Minte found an ideal opportunity at Obi Odense, 
a Danish club known for its focus on developing young players. The club was managed by Andreas Alm, a Swedish coach renowned for his work with young talents. In fact, Alm had given a 16-year-old Alexander Isak his debut for AIK back in 2016. Björn Westrom, who currently serves as OB Odense's sporting director, held the same role at AIK during that time. Minte's standout attribute, according to Westrom, was his speed, combined with his ambition to attack the goal directly rather than playing it safe. This directness was a recurring theme in his style of play. As a winger, Minta averaged over two shots per game, a relatively high number, reflecting his willingness to take on opponents and go straight for the goal. However, Minta's directness and ambition were not limited to his on-field performance. In February, just five months after making his first team debut, he attracted minor controversy by openly expressing his desire to play in a top league and to do so as quickly as possible. Upon joining OB Odense, initially in the under-19 team, Jankoba Minte quickly caught the attention of the club's coaching staff. Impressively, it only took two matches with the youth team before he was promoted to the first team. In one notable performance against Randers, Minte showcased his skills by tormenting the opposition's left back, frequently cutting inside from the right onto his favorite left foot. During this time, Minte drew comparisons to former Denmark winger Dennis Romadal from reporters. Leif Rasmussen, a local reporter covering OB Odense for Fien Stiftstedende, spoke highly of Minte's impact, stating that the opposition struggled to contain him and that he possessed unique qualities that set him apart from others. Minte's chance to make his mark in the first team came in September 2022, in a match against eventual league winners Copenhagen. With the score tied at 1-1 in the 83 minute, OB Odense coach Andreas Alm made a bold decision and substituted Minte on for midfielder Franco Tonga. OB was pushing for a victory, and Minte would prove pivotal in repaying his coach's faith. In a display of enthusiasm and determination, Minte chased down a seemingly lost ball, pressuring the Copenhagen defense. When the ball ultimately found its way to him at the edge of the box, Minta found himself unmarked and had the opportunity to calmly sidefoot the ball into the net, securing a surprising winner. This victory was particularly astonishing considering that OBO Dents would go on to lose the reverse fixture against Copenhagen 7 duo in March. Tani Hermansen, the academy boss at OBO Dents, highlighted Minte's relative anonymity at the time, noting that the young player hadn't even had his name printed on the back of his shirt. It is a tradition at OB Odense for players not to wear their names on the blue and white striped jersey until they have been permanently moved into the first team squad. However, Minta's impressive performances earned him a place in the first team within just two months, and he chose to wear the number 30, the same number worn by his idol Lionel Messi during his time at Paris Saint-Germain. Yankuba Minte's development continued to impress as he made further contributions to OB Odense's matches. In his next appearance against Silkeborg, Minta's speed led to an assist in a 1-1 draw. Two weeks later, in a rainy match against Lingby, he showcased his abilities once again by providing two assists within the first eight minutes of the game. The first assist came from an in-swinging cross, while the second involved drawing the attention of the opposition defense and laying off the ball for Alessana Mane to score. He was so good that the team refused to let him go to the Under-20 World Cup because they felt he was the difference between them moving up or staying down. Despite his rapid progress, there were some challenges for Minte off the pitch. Initially, he struggled to settle into life in Odense and living on his own. The club arranged for him to stay in a block of flats with other athletes, but Minte didn't enjoy the experience. Eventually, he moved in with his agent while his family visited him regularly. Minta acknowledged the difficulties of his first six months at the club, but emphasized that hard work would lead to easier times. Minta's disciplinary issues also surfaced during this period. The first incident involved breaking team curfew rules and subsequently being dropped from the squad for a weekend. However, the public backlash was severe, and Minta faced harassment online and in person, leading to a short break from the club due to stress. Upon his return, he was involved in an altercation with a senior teammate, Mads Frokjer Jensen, during training. Although they were separated without physical contact, such incidents were uncommon at OB. Despite these challenges, Minte continued to perform well on the pitch. He started every eligible game and had a productive spell in April, contributing a goal and three assists in a two-week period. On November 4, 2022, Minte received his first call-up to the Gambia national team for friendly matches against DR Congo and Liberia. 
Minte's ambition and desire to make his family proud were noted by those close to him. The club staff also recognized his work ethic, with Minte studying highlights of Europe's top five leagues and displaying enthusiasm for defending, even if he sometimes lacked efficiency. Minte's defending intensity and one-on-one -on -one defending were praised, but his overall defending impact score was relatively low due to his over-enthusiasm and the fact that he still possessed a teenage physique. These aspects were seen as areas for improvement that would come with experience. Despite the Gambian under-20 coach Abduli Bojang saying, I always tell young players that they should not overestimate their own abilities. I still think it's a bit early. He is still young. He lacks experience. If he goes to a big club and doesn't perform, he's stuck. On June 12, 2023, Premier League club Newcastle United announced that they had reached a deal to sign the 18-year-old winger, effective from July 1, 2023. Media reports claimed that Newcastle would pay OBO Dens a fee of 50 million Danish krone, which was in the region 6 million pounds. Simultaneously, Newcastle also announced that upon his arrival, Minte would be immediately loaned out to Eredivisie champions Feyenoord for the 2023-24 season, a move that would change his life and propel his career to superstardom. Under coach Arne Slot, Minte was convinced that his development as a footballer would be a main focus as Feyenoord have a very successful track record of growing their own academy prospects. In his debut in a friendly against Zwolle on July 8, 2023, he scored a goal. The teenager was handed his first foray into Dutch football in a substitute appearance in a 1-0 loss to PSV in the Johan Cruyff Shield. Over the next four league games, he consistently performed well, even scoring a goal against Utrecht on September 3, 2023. On September 10, he scored for Gambia against Congo Republic in an African Cup of Nations qualifier, resulting in a 2-2 draw. Returning from international duty on the 16th of the same month, he had an outstanding performance, scoring and assisting against Hirenveen in a 6-1 victory. He made his Champions League debut on September 19 against Celtic. He went on to play in the club's next 10 games, scoring three goals. Among those goals was one against Celtic in the Champions League reverse fixture. At the age of 19 years and 144 days, Jankoba Minte became the youngest player ever to score for Feyenoord in the Champions League and the youngest in a major European tournament since Jorginho Wijnaldum in 2008. He was then called up for the international team and selected in the 27-man squad for Gambia in the African Cup of Nations. Despite playing in every game, including a masterclass in the third group stage match, his country did not advance past the group stage. Upon his return, he faced some setbacks, finding himself lower in the pecking order and receiving criticism for being selfish in front of goal and not passing the ball to teammates in better positions. Nevertheless, his undeniable talent allowed him to work his way back into the team. He has since featured in matches against teams like Roma in the Europa League and is a constant starter for Feyenoord. As of now, he has scored four goals in his last three games. He has become the fifth teenager this century to score for Feyenoord in three consecutive Eredivisie games, joining the ranks of Robin van Persie, Salomon Kalou, Luke Castaños and John Guideri. What's even more impressive is that in the ten games he has started, he has averaged 49 minutes per game, scoring seven goals and providing two assists. With each game, Minte has continued to defy expectations and captivate audiences. His blistering speed, impeccable skill, and lethal finishing have become his trademarks, leaving defenders in his wake and goalkeepers floundering. But it's not just his on-field prowess that sets him apart. Minte's unwavering dedication and tireless work ethic have propelled him through the challenges that come with being a young football prodigy. Hailing from the Gambia, a nation not traditionally recognized for its footballing exports, Minte has shattered stereotypes and proven that talent knows no boundaries. He has become a symbol of hope and inspiration for aspiring footballers in his homeland, showing them that dreams can indeed become a reality with hard work and determination. Be sure to check out more captivating documentaries about Newcastle United players through the link on your screen.